Hello everybody, my name is Naya and I'm the Black Female Engineer and today we are going to be talking about the five main tips to help you get through the technical interview and overall get you that job because technical interviews to this day they are the thing I hate the most part like the worst part of the recruitment process for me but with these five tips you can definitely step up your tech interview game. And keep in mind, these are more unconventional tips that people really don't talk about. It took me going through the tech interview process for a couple of times for me to really see what these interviewers want to see. And so that is this right here. And so let's get to it. So tip number one, the first thing you need to do when you get that coding question from your interviewer is express to them that you know how important this question is. And so what do I mean by this? When you get a certain coding question from an interviewer, especially if this is your second or third interview for that company, likely that question has some relation to the work that company actually does. And so let's say you're interviewing for like Six Flags or Disney. The interview question you get could be something related to their amusement parks. That's actually the situation I had where the company I was interviewing for had worked in the realm of parks in some of their business. And the question I had had to do with the, with the um, amusement parks and the wait times and organizing you know data and all of this and so the first thing you do or the first thing I did was say thank you for bringing up this problem I understand that because we are in a panoramic you know parallelogram Panera bread that the issue of organizing amusement parks in a certain way is very very important for the functionality of the business but also making sure that people are still safe while also having fun and so i'm really excited to dive in with this question period boom right there the interviewer is like okay okay i see what you did there you showed that you care about our business and you see what we do and what we deal with every single day and that's important because y'all when you are going through a technical interview what they're really trying to see and this is like a secret so like they're not really looking to see if you'll answer the problem i mean sure if you answer that's great but they're seeing what kind of engineer are you are you a person who just takes a problem and just pits out answers like a machine? Or are you a person who is able to think beyond the problem and provide real solutions that are robust and are will be able to withstand the test of time and really is brought because of your true understanding of what we're dealing with they're trying to see what type of engineer you are and so by spitting back the problem at them and sharing why you know it's important it shows them that you care about the work they do and they want people who care okay so you just told them why the problem is important now the next thing you do is inspect your inputs so this is specific with javascript because that's really the language i'm most proficient in in terms of coding interviews and so with javascript you know hackerings or you know coding interviews and all of this you are given some type of starting point they say okay here's an array of 10 amusement parks now do this 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 or solve the problem with this 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 whatever they give you to start manipulating or to use to solve the problem before you even solve the problem look at what they give you is it in a way is it structured in a way that is efficient that actually works for you or will just make things harder in the long run and so one easy way to spot this is did they give you just a lot of strings that is a good way of being of telling that this is not the most efficient this can be now 
for beginners what's a string a string is really just text that's the data structure it's words or numbers but in wrapped in quotations and in javascript it's very difficult to well maybe not very difficult but it's more difficult than it should be to manipulate strings and if you're trying to manipulate strings to solve you know a problem or a certain you know organizing of things that's going to be pretty what's the word like just inefficient and will just make you go through a bunch of hoopla and hurdles for for not a good cause and so the first thing you would do in this situation is convert those strings to something else and so if is there a number in the string make sure you take it out of a string and make sure it's a number because for example you can't multiply strings together you can't add strings together so if it's a one in quotes you can't use that to like do any math but by taking it out of those quotes you can now do math on it you can now add it to certain data structures in ways that you couldn't have done with a string and so that's one very good way to tell are these inputs that they're giving me are they efficient are they the best they can be or can I change them and so if you see this and the answer is actually I could work better with this if it was in this form first thing you do make it that form make the first function you create be a function to alter that given input now technically it's not directly solving the problem at hand but again it goes back to what type of engineer are you are you the type of engineer to just take what you've been given and try the best you can with it even though you know it's inefficient and you know it's not the best it could be or are you the type of engineer who identifies that there is a certain problem with what you've been given and the first thing you'll do is make sure you resolve that before going to your next steps what type of engineer are you that is always the number one thing we need to get back to and we need to show them that you're an engineer who thinks ahead and who can take a step back to look at the scenery to see things around before just jumping into a problem so my next tip tip number three you get this you know problem and everything they give you your inputs and they say run with it what is the answer how do you solve this problem if it's a longer type problem don't just create one function and just be doing all your steps in that function and just be typing away and and with this like 50 lines of code all in one function no break up the problem if there are multiple steps to solving the problem break it up and likely unless the question is what's one plus one there are multiple steps to the problem a rule of thumb with um javascript is make sure your functions aren't more than five to seven lines long and that still applies in coding interviews because again and i'm going to say this until you just hear it everywhere what type of engineer are you are you the type of engineer who just provides and produces just blocks of code or are you the engineer who can make sure things are readable and are efficient and are easily transferable between teams because by making sure your functions are each just five to seven lines long it shows that you are the latter which is what we want as a company that's what i would want as a company but you know what what, what do i know i just I have a job but <laughs> but no seriously y'all and i will say this it's hard to do when there is a pair of eyes on you or if it's even worse where there's multiple people in your tech interview just looking at you or if you're working in hackery and there's just the timer just right in front of you it's hard to remember to take a step back and solve a problem holistically rather than just beating out lines of code i it's hard to do but i understand that but you need to remember the goal is not to solve the problem I know I know it's wild that I'm saying this the goal is not to solve the problem is to show them what type of engineer are you okay 
Now, before getting to tip number four, I'm gonna remind y'all to click that subscribe button and click the like button if, if you like what you're hearing. If there's one tip in here that you didn't think before that you think can help, please click that like button and subscribe if you've liked my content. I really want this community to grow and I love how much it has so far. So thank you all. And now let's get to tip number four. Tip number four. After you have solved the problem or because let's, you know, let's be honest, we don't always solve the problem. Like I surely don't. After we're done all we can, you know, to get through the problem, finish it off by saying what the next steps for the engineering team would be if you had gotten this problem, you know, at your desk, at work, and now it's time to hand it off. What is the next step? Because odds are this project, this problem, it doesn't end with you. Your manager, when you, you know, get that dream job, they're not going to approach your desk and be like, hey, can you solve this problem? And then you give them something and they're like, cool, they put a stamp on it and send it off. Like, no, it doesn't end with you. There are more people in the chain that this is going to go to. And your the way you go about this problem, the way your team goes about this problem, luckily has an effect on the company's next steps. And so think about what those next steps would be. And so let's go back to the amusement park problem, okay? So we just went through that the best we could. We solved it, we didn't solve it. We did the best we could. Now, finish it off by saying, so really the next steps would be for the engineering team to come together with the business team and be able to understand what wait times are longer than others, which rides experience more wait times, more popularity, and find ways to reorganize the park or reorganize certain um, business times to make sure people do stay safe while also making sure that the park is functioning at max efficiency. This may include adding new park rides or re, um, or rearranging certain rides, certain wait times, or even structuring a line in a certain way to make sure that people um, are staying at that six feet apart range to limit exposure. Boom. There we go. Now, think about what that interview must be thinking. Like, okay, not only did you go through the problem with X, Y, and Z, but you also sh sh shed insight onto what we as a company should do next. That shows, again, that you would be the type of worker that thinks ahead and, are, and care more about the larger picture, not just what your job is, but how your job affects his job and his manager's job and his manager's job. That shows that you also have leadership qualities by being able to think in this holistic sense. And that is a type of employee companies want. And now finally, tip number five to really show this company that you are the person for the job is to make sure that when you are going through the coding, through the analysis and typing things out, make sure you don't get too abstract with your function names, with your variable names. Make sure things are kept very, very readable and easy to follow. So instead of saying something like, let X equal two plus two, say something like, let total rides equal two plus two. By changing that X to a more descriptive name, then the teams, because again, we're thinking about if we have the job, we're not thinking about just the coding interview right now. Then the team who later has this project or is later inspecting our code can now follow along way better and way faster than if it just says X. Because if it just says X, now the team has to scroll through all the code and find the origin of X and see what it was originally assigned to. And that takes time, y'all. Like that is time that people don't have up in these days. Like, no, we don't want that. We want to make sure that we are keeping our code as efficient as possible, as readable as possible to make sure that when we do hand it off, that person spends as little time as possible understanding what we wrote. I, and I know you are going to bite my head off for saying this, but we are showing them the type of engineer we will be. Will we be the difficult engineer in the office because Kathy over here just constantly puts the most abstract, obscure 
variable names and so constantly makes my job harder or is she a person who thinks about the person that's going to see this next and makes sure that things are super readable and super easy to follow because coding can be hard enough in its own i don't need to be banging my head around the table because i can't figure out where x is and what x was that's not something we want and that's not an employee we want in our team someone who makes the job harder for people no that's not what we want so this is such an easy way to show your interviewer that you can make things as simple as possible for the people around you and so let me give you all of a story time now that we went through those five tips my interview so i had an interview with a company that was my dream company I get all the way to the third round and it was, um, I had to set up, you know, a technical solution and everything for the coding problem. I get my score back from hack, cause it was administered through Hacker Rank. I get my score back from Hacker Rank. Y'all, I got a zero out of 75. And I am not lying to you just to like, get views or like, I am not lying to you. I got a zero out of 75. I actually did a talk about it um, in Women Who Code. I spoke with them on how to fail the JavaScript hacker rank and still get the job. Yes, this is that story. I got a zero out of 75, but because of the five things I laid out for you today, because of those things, I showed them that I am the type of engineer they want. And I got a job offer 20 minutes after my interview and so i am i swear by these tips and so keep in mind y'all you can be the best engineer out there but you can still get a question that just throws you for a loop and you get a score that you don't want or you get frazzled or you like go into this spin of not knowing how to solve it it's okay to not know how to solve a problem i'm serious like i'm really serious y'all it is okay to not know how to solve it and it's okay to not solve it in totality to not come up with that exact answer because what a company is seeing or wants to see is what type of engineer are you and what type of engineer would you be in this company? So keep that in mind. So no, thank you so much for getting through this with me. I'm so excited to just, like I said, see this community grow. So please click that subscribe button and I will see you all very, very soon. Bye y'all.